everybody and welcome back to another vlog. This one is all about Star because I feel like Star a few weeks ago he was all over my channel. He was busy, he was doing stuff and it's been a bit quiet recently. As you guys know Atty has been my main focus going to Wellington, Cornbury, preparing for Osberton and I did have a little cheeky holiday which I very much enjoyed. So you've seen a lot of this guy and not very much of a certain big grey somebody. However, that is all about to change. He had a super busy return to eventing with two 90s in the space of about 10 days plus Pony Club Show Jumping Championships. And if you haven't seen all those vlogs, go and see how he's been getting on. And because of all that, he very deservedly had a good week was always the plan to chill, hack, work on his flat work, you know, take the pressure off, let him process everything he had just done. However, that did end up turning into kind of a chilled two weeks. Now it's nearly three weeks and he's been hacking and flat working and lunging and been going really well. But suddenly we have an entry for our first B100 back in seven days time. And we haven't jumped in almost three weeks. The last time we jumped was at Blindley Heath. So there is a lot of work to be done ahead of stepping back up to 100, which thank you for that stuff, <laughs> which is super exciting, but also quite nerve wracking. So he has an action packed first half of this week. We've got dressage lessons, a dressage competition and a couple of jumping sort of exercises. Today we're going to start nice and casually and then we've got a jumping outing in a few days time. And I thought, why not just vlog it all? Why not show you how we're preparing Star to step up a level in eventing and hopefully it will pay off. So first things first, I'm going to have a little jump at home because he's literally not jumped anything in, yeah, like I said, almost three weeks. So mum is going to set up a little gymnastic jumping exercise, not very big, just to get his eye, my eye back in. I've been jumping at a lot and I've not jumped him, so probably need a nice gentle session ahead of going to arena higher in a couple of days time and jumping a bit of a bigger course. So that is the plan for today. Enjoy. Hello everybody. I thought I would pop a voiceover over some of these sessions that you'll see in this vlog because I've been working really hard behind the scenes with Star and I thought maybe it was worth sharing with you guys what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So. This little warm up jump was quite nice, that's kind of how I want Star to go. And then the next clip that you're about to see shows a bit more of how Star likes to go. He likes those short little half trot, half canter strides, he likes to put his head in the air like a bit of a giraffe and I think I've settled for that for way too long. Like yes, of course, is that how I warm him up? No. But as soon as we get jumping and his head goes in the air, I have to hold my hands up and say I think I've been a little bit guilty of just sort of allowing him to do that because that's in my mind how he is happiest but actually coming back from injury spending so much time rehabbing him to get him perfect it's obviously doing him absolutely no good to stick his head up in the air like a giraffe and it makes him so difficult to ride because how can you judge a distance on a horse who sort of sticks their head and neck right up towards you and then changes pace rapidly in front of the fence. So I've been working super duper hard over the last sort of couple of weeks particularly on this longer term picture of a sort of harmonious horse and rider and kind of not settling for any less. So you'll see later in the vlog when we go schooling and I jump around a course. I pop in a fair few circles in front of fences where I feel he's not listening to me. Just so, in training at home, I'm not jumping anything until I feel he's in the perfect canter so he learns that that is the canter he jumps out of. And also not finishing jumping down a line, hopefully I might show it here, not finishing and coming back to trot until I'm happy with the canter. So you can see here I canter him away, I keep him going, I think I may actually come round again. But even if I wasn't going to, rather than, you know, jumping the big grid or whatever and celebrating, woohoo, we've gone clear. No, actually, until that count is where I want it, A, I won't jump anything else, and B, I won't bring you back to trot. And I feel like these things are probably quite basic. I'm definitely not setting a precedent, but it actually is all about holding yourself accountable, isn't it? Like, looking back over some of the footage. Of course he reacts and sticks his head up in the, hair, in the air at competitions because I'm not demanding that he doesn't do it at home in training. 
yeah, I'm sort of waffling a little bit, but I thought it was really important to sort of share my vision. And I left in this clip because I felt him tense up around this corner. You can't actually see it too much, but I felt him. So I thought I'm going to do a little circle in front of the fence. That was really good there. Which my mum was very happy I did. <laughs> so that he wasn't going to anticipate. Because he, he didn't thing. anticipate it. Oh, there you go, I'm speaking of my mum. But we're just trying to get rid of any of that underlying tension. And my goodness, doesn't he look like such a smart horse when he's listening? And how much more of a forward and confident rider am I? So, yeah, very excited about how this next level of training will help us. You did. It was you, I can see it in your, in your face. There we go. No star. Don't do it, yeah, man. Let me work hard. My shoulder's bum. <laughs> like hard work. <laughs> no, I see you're going. Yeah, well, whatever you're going, I'm going. I'm ah, just like I wanted to, I told you I wanted the double roll. <laughs> Good morning. I've realised I haven't done an intro for today or spoken about yesterday, but it is the next day. I'm just about to have a dressage lesson and I'm going to have to catch up with you afterwards. Right, I'm back with another voiceover, this time of my dressage lesson. And I don't share a lot of dressage footage on my channel, be that lessons, training, whatever. I don't think it's necessarily what people are the most interested in, which I totally get and understand. But I have had now two lessons with Kylie. I've had loads of jumping lessons with her, but two flat work lessons, and they've both been game changers. So I had to leave in about four or five minutes from our session, and I really urge you to watch it. It's so interesting. So as you can see, he came Came out a little bit fresh then started to listen and then had a classic star moment in which a little foal walks past which you can see on the screen now which he found very scary and I know a lot of horses do find foals scary for whatever reason but as you can see he really was like nope that's it and quite often I would I obviously wouldn't give up but I'd be like oh he's tense now that's it the whole session is going to be tense whereas Kylie was like absolutely not you know he's in the arena he's safe he's happy he's comfortable you pop him in a little circle get him listening to your inside hand and go from there and within about 30 seconds to a minute he was back in a reasonably relaxed walk and I was like is this how easy it is just having someone there to kind of convince you that you're doing the right thing and not to give up and to keep sort of demanding the best is so beneficial because I can be a little bit guilty of being a bit weak-minded and if he's going no no I'm really upset I'm like oh in which case there must be something wrong are you okay actually he was fine he was just being silly and I guess he was trying it on a bit so it's really good to have someone there to tell me to tell me that I guess so after that he actually came into his trot straight away really quite nicely we'd had a little battle I had won the battle and I think he was listening and then something that I kind of wouldn't expect from Star being such a sort of hot slash sensitive horse where I'd won the battle and kind of got him to do what I wanted he then went quite behind the leg so we popped on a pair of spurs again I just wouldn't think to put a pair of spurs on when riding Star because he's usually so hot and it just made the world a difference because my legs weren't having to sort of flap around the whole time and suddenly he's giving me a much nicer sort of more forward movement it's actually so useful for me to watch all these videos back I haven't watched any of them back yet and to just see how nicely he's going and yeah those spurs really made the difference like I said I know I've said a couple of times but I just wouldn't have thought to make that connection because he is quite an excited horse so then we moved up into the canter and he was going really nicely. I love having dressage lessons and I do not have enough because you get those little nuggets of information and those little tools and tips that you can take away and for sure the biggest one that I got with Star which you'll see in a minute is if he's not being supple enough when he goes up into the canter because he can be quite supple in the walk and trot and then as soon as he goes into the canter he can fix his neck a little bit more. So we were going large and then as soon as I felt that the 
tension was coming back and he wasn't letting me in, I was popping in little sort of 10 to 15 metre circles, just remind him, yep, you've got to bend, you've got to sort of focus. And it was so useful. I would take that away and use that the next time I'm in a dress up warm up situation because I think it just drills into his mind. You know, look, I'm in charge here. And if you're going to tense up, then you're going to have to do some harder circles. Honestly, such a useful dress up lesson. I'm only gutted that I'm going back to Loughborough and that Kylie won't be closer, but I'll definitely be having her again over Easter and over summer. She was fantastic. I feel like you can tell that I worked hard because I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards but let's have a very quick chat about the last couple of days because I've got only one bar on my battery um but yesterday we had a little bit of a jump down a grid at home because the ground is perfect at the moment and had to be sensible it would have been so easy to just keep putting the fences up and up and up with Star because he finds it so easy but that was not what it was about at all just popped down the grid maybe six seven eight times just to get my eye back in he was really good and felt like a good session ahead of a course jumping session this week so that's good today i had a dressage lesson with kylie roddy she's an eventer and i've had her quite a lot over the years you might recognize her from or may recognize the arena from older videos but i've always had her to jump really and then last week or two or three weeks ago i had her for a flat work session and it was just incredible like such a transformative experience for star and i and he was like just so good so we booked in had another one today and same thing just brilliant i will hopefully have done a bit of a voiceover of some of the lesson given some of my thoughts but she just gets him going so nicely so hopefully that is the building blocks we need ahead of taking him to do just an unaffiliated dressage test on thursday so yeah things are going well and they are feeling good and looking exciting yeah positive start to the week Good morning everybody, another day, another trip out in the lorry, Star is in the back and we are headed off for his last jump ahead of Elmwood today, we're going to Wellington and we're going to pop up a little bit of a course because I haven't really jumped a metre on him since he's been back and work, we've been keeping things small and friendly, so it's time to just kind of see where we're at, have a little test, and to be honest we haven't jumped a course since Blindley Heath was that now like three weeks ago so hopefully it'll be really good practice i mean every horse is different with atty for a competition it's always super important to me to jump quite a lot bigger so if i'm going to do a meter class i'd like to jump sort of like a meter 10 because he's not super careful with his feet and i want to give him a bit of a wake-up call whereas star is almost the opposite you want to instill confidence in him so we'll go today and hopefully have a really positive time i'm not so bothered about the height but obviously it'd be nice if it's getting up towards the meter so we know what we're up against on sunday and hopefully he'll love it all You guessed it, I'm back with another voiceover. I'm just doing this video a little bit differently and sort of giving my training thoughts. So let me know if you like it. You can see this is the very end of my sort of flat warm up. I'm doing some counter canters because it's another tool that Kylie gave me when he's not sort of being particularly supple with his neck. Just change things up, pop in a little bit of counter canter. I will say that this session was like the on consecutive days after the last two sessions so he had a very busy start to this particular week and i feel like he was a little bit pooped but i actually think that was quite good for him to get him to the point where he was actually a little bit on a tired side because he was more willing to learn and compromise with me so i have left in a little bit more of my initial warm-up than i normally would and please do let me know down in the comments of the video if you've made it this far if you enjoy seeing this every now and again a bit more of the warm-up a little bit more of my thoughts rather than just you know the shiny flashy big show jumping around so this is my warm-up and i thought it was good to show because of how calm he was and i would say if i was on atty i would want to have 20% more canter before I start jumping. I'm not saying that this is the perfect show jumping canter by any stretch of the imagination. It's a little bit uh, flat and sort of behind. Perfect. And as you can see, that's a very underwhelming jump, but that is totally what we were going for. Just kind of calming him down a bit. He loves his jumping and you cannot knock that. It's very pleasant that he does, but it also he means- that and I did. 
sorry, I'm just gonna let you listen to mum when she speaks. But it means that he, yeah, gets very eager and his cancer, like I've said sort of throughout this video, can get quite- Once you've done it a second time, do you want me to put it into a straight? Quite, I think that's around. all of her talking done now. But you know, his head goes in the air and yeah, he sort of like hoons at the fences and I just sit on board. Whereas we're really working on getting him listening and doing things like circling in front of fences so he doesn't so anticipate. Good. So yeah, I really was pleased with how he came out and warmed up. And then as soon as the fences started to go up a little bit more, I think in this next clip that you're about to see, I did then sort of rev and wake up a little bit. Okay, maybe not this clip. <laughs> maybe the next clip. But honestly, doesn't he look like a different horse? And I'm not saying that this is the show jumping He's canter. He's a nice calm canter at the moment. That we need long really term. Good. I'm not saying that at all. But it, the fact that he has this in him and the fact that we could unlock this was very positive. I think there's about 20 seconds left of my warm up, so I shall leave you to watch it and then I'll come back when we do some course commentary. Okay, time for course one. So I jumped around two courses. The second was a little bit bigger than the first and also slightly different jumps. So I'll probably leave them both in. I haven't watched this footage back at all. This is blind react, but I do remember that I think I came a little bit backwards to the first couple of fences, which that wasn't him at all. That was on me. And so I think I possibly put in a circle here. He's a bit all over the place. He's on the wrong leg and just sort myself out. At least I hope I did. Yes, sensible flow. <laughs> and why not in training? Obviously in competitions you can't go out and put circles in front of fences if you want to be competitive, but actually it's something I never really do and I actually think it's really good for Star and I, you know, there I did actually still massively mess it up, that's so embarrassing for me. I'm joking, it's not embarrassing, we all mess things up sometimes, but because I had gone and established that good canter, it was fine. It was absolutely fine. We were okay to get a bit close, just as long as I don't do it again. <laughs> you can see he's gone up again now as well. He absolutely loves his course jumping. He loves it when the fences goes up. He knows his job. It's literally, yeah, his favorite thing to do. Popped in another little circle there because I just felt his head was getting a little bit up in the air and not sort of listening and I wanted a nicer rhythm back. And I think we might have been coming to a double as well. So I just really wanted to make sure that we were sort of together and there we go I find as well that when I have him in my hands I possibly oh I got lost here that was not an intentional Spread circle over there, I think. but that I got one. a little bit lost that's fine but I do find that when I put in these circles and I get him in the rhythm I want and doing the canter that I want he's so much easier to ride because I can actually ride for a stride. I don't have to sort of account for any exuberant big steps beforehand. So yeah, I can attack it more like I would on Atty. So this has just been such a good change in his way of going both for him and for me. He jumped that lovely. He's so careful with his little knees. And he jumped that one very nicely as well. I think we were possibly about to come around to another combination. There's only about one or two fences left in this course. Good job, got a little bit close before that. And then back on yourself to the last. I don't think I put in a circle here, but I did do a little trot transition, maybe I did. Again, I'm not saying long term it's the best habit to get into, but brilliant. I honestly think he was listening to me so much more. Very happy with that first round. Okay, so before we dive into round two, I've just tried to film a voiceover for it and I can't lie, I feel like you're probably just going to get sick of hearing my voice all the time, so I shall simply just comment and say that the first fence I did not get the best shot into, but it was okay because they hadn't gone up, but most of the rest of the fences had gone up one to two holes in preparation for the weekend. And I think it's more of the same really, utilising circles in an effective way, the one thing that I've think is a takeaway point from this round is how interesting it is that when we are working more balanced and he's you know keeping his head a little bit not down down's the wrong word but you know not sticking it up in the air like a giraffe and actually working through his body properly because that's new to both of us 
He's actually quite often not landing on the leg that I'm telling him to. We're still trying to figure out all those buttons and I think that is a very interesting takeaway and something to certainly work on in the weeks and months ahead of us. Anyway, I shall let you hopefully enjoy the rest of the round. There you have it. That brings us to the end of this vlog. I was hoping there was going to be another day of action as I was actually meant to be taking Star to a dressage competition tomorrow, which would have been perfect to sort of round off everything we've learned in our dressage sessions and off the back of a busy few days. I was hoping that he would just settle in straight away and literally just go and do a prelim test. But unfortunately it has been canceled because the class had lack of entries. Very, very typical, isn't it? But we move. I feel like, oh, hello, Artie. I feel like we've actually had a reasonably good prep this week. I'm really excited to take on Elmwood, which will be my first 100 with Star. I don't know what it's like there. I have actually been once years ago. It's the place I did my first ever one day event, but an 80, literally like, what, eight years ago now? Seven years ago now? So no recollection of what it's going to be like, but hopefully, I think it's meant to be on the flatter side and not too technical. So it should be a good first 100 for Star and I get back into the swing of things. Yeah, excited for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and I'll see you very, very soon with his actual event vlog. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Bye.